Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is a 2008 Yamaha XT250, and today I'll show you how to replace the throttle cables. When inspecting this bike that my friend just bought, I noticed that the throttle return cable was broken. The main cable is still attached, and the bike still runs like it normally would, so I've been riding it anyway, but without a return cable, it's possible that the throttle could get stuck open at the carburetor. If your throttle feels rough, you can try lubricating the cable, but they're usually pretty well sealed from the environment, so a rough feeling, visual damage, or corrosion usually means it's time for replacement. The cables are attached to each other and have to be replaced as a set, but it's really not that hard, so let's get to it. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Impact driver, socket adapter, 10 mm socket, 4 mm hex, 5 mm hex, Phillips number three, Phillips number two, eight millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, needle nose pliers, flathead screwdriver, and a magnetic bowl. For this job, I also needed waterproof grease, rags, gloves, brake cleaner, a couple of replacement bolts, and a new set of cables. There are links in the description for everything I used. I put the bike on a stand to keep it upright and steady, but it's not necessary. There are two 10 millimeter bolts under the rear fender securing the seat. Oh. Usually. Hmm. The side panels should be secured with Phillips screws, but they're not. Luckily, the grommet mounts on this bike are doing their job. The fuel tank plastics are being held on with two 4mm hex bolts, but they're missing two more in the front. At least I had a zip tie. How did we get that through there? <laughs> The three bolts securing the fuel tank can be removed with a 5mm hex. I should get a better tool for pulling hoses like this, but this one was so old it felt like jelly and probably would have ripped anyway. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming fuel line replacement video, I guess. Oh, ho, ho, we're gonna need a new fuel line. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Your fuel line might spill a few drops of gas when you disconnect it, but this bike is bone dry. That is due for replacement for sure. This panel on the right side should also be removed. This end of the cable also has the adjuster for making big changes to the throttle free play. I used a 10 millimeter wrench to loosen this nut and pull the cable housing free from the mounting bracket. The lower one requires an eight millimeter wrench, but on this one it was seized with dirt, so I had to use some pliers to help break it free. I had to loosen these two bolts so I could move the front brake lever out of the way. Push back this rubber boot and remove the two screws with a Phillips number two. Try not to drop this thing in the process. Nice. This is where the return cable should be. Disconnect any remaining cables and pull off the hand grip. This is a good time to clean and re-lube the throttle grip. I wiped off the dirt and used brake cleaner to remove any old grease, but I probably could have gotten some of the rust off with steel wool. Only use brake cleaner in a well-ventilated area. 
I used waterproof grease, but the service manual says to use lithium soap based grease. Before you remove the old cables, look closely at how they're routed. Now we can disconnect and remove the cables. Make sure the new cables are the same as the old ones before you route them through the bike, starting from the top. I routed them the wrong way the first time and had to redo it when I realized the throttle didn't have any play in it. Make sure the cables go through the small opening here. Make some space between the fasteners to fit the cables on the mounting bracket. I used a flathead screwdriver to hold the throttle plate open so I could see the attachment point for the upper cable. I had a hard time getting my hands in that tight space, so I used needle nose pliers to attach the cables. I set the adjuster in the upper cable as loose as possible and secured the locking nut. When I pulled on the opposite end of the return cable, the housing slipped right into place. The return cable doesn't have any kind of free play adjustment, it just needs to be tight on the mounting bracket. Now the cables can be connected to the throttle grip as shown. I tried attaching them to the hand grip first, but there wasn't enough slack to connect the other ends. By the way, it would be pretty hard to install these backwards, but I know nothing's really impossible, so just try to make sure everything's oriented the way I'm showing it. So, this little bump has to fit in that hole. Bump? Oh. And on a side note, new cables shouldn't need to be lubricated, but if you do choose to lubricate them anyway, I'd recommend something dry that doesn't attract dirt, such as graphite powder. When it's in the right spot, secure the case with its two screws. Double check that there's no gap between the two halves of the metal case and slide the rubber boot over the end. The throttle should have 3 to 5 millimeters of movement measured at the end of the grip. Use this adjuster for small adjustments and the one at the other end of the cable for large adjustments. The cables I installed didn't need any adjusting. 
Put the front brake lever back where you want it and tighten its two bolts. Slide this panel back into place, push it into the upper grommet, and secure it with its screw. This rubber piece actually goes on top of the fuel tank, so I had to fix that later. And when I looked at the parts diagrams, I noticed there's another piece that I'm missing that goes on top of it. I ordered that piece and all the screws I'm missing from Partzilla.com. Reconnect the fuel line and secure the tank with its three bolts. The tank plastics have slots that slide onto hooks on the gas tank. Secure them with two bolts each. There's supposed to be a couple more screws. I'm missing screws under there. Each side panel attaches to two rubber grommets, clips into the rear fender, and should be secured with a screw. The seat hooks under the tank here, and I found two bolts in the garage that are the right size to secure the rear. M6 by 1.0. The last thing to do is start the bike up and make sure it's working properly. This bike doesn't have any gas in it because it all leaked out when the petcock went bad. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming petcock replacement video. With the engine warmed up and the choke off, turn the bars all the way to one side and then the other, making sure that the idle speed doesn't change due to tension in the cables. Test the throttle for smooth operation and double check that the free play is set properly. Looks like I'll be replacing that fuel line before this bike can be ridden again, so look for that video coming soon. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it.